as we uh, as we descend. Roger that. So it looks like we have a uh, Ficinex siphonophore in front of us here. Uh, not quite close enough yet to see what it is, but the it looks apolemi-ish because the cyphosome or the tail is fuzzy looking and it doesn't have a clear white, clear, white, clear, white, clear, or brown, clear, brown, clear, brown, clear coloration to it. Uh, you can tell if it's an apolemia by looking between the swimming bells if there are tentacles coming out, uh, in which case it's an apolemia and the fuzziness of those uh, of the tail part there, the cyphosome is uh, usually due to a mass of writhing palpons or uh, yeah, that's an apolemia, all right. Uh, this one seems to have well-developed bracts. You can see like a transparent layer, uh, which is protecting the, uh, the soft parts, the, the gonads, the, uh, the gonozoids and the gastrozoids, the stomachs. Uh, and he's coiling up to try and reduce his volume, uh, make himself stand out less. They tend to have a very few number of swimming bells compared to the length of the cyphosome in apolemia, so a fairly short uh, nectosome and a long cyphosome. They can reach uh, over 10 meters in length and I believe the, uh, the falcor the Sebastian found uh, one that was over 40 meters in length off Western Australia uh, earlier on this year. Yeah, very nice. Okay. Well, all right, Thank Lou, you. That's, I'll that's stay so on lovely. until uh, you reach people. Yeah, I was just saying that's a, <laughs> a great way to, to finish up the midwater dive. Um, so we, we've just crossed uh, the 1,000 meter mark. It's 4.6 degrees C. And now we're going to drive the ROV uh, down at a higher rate towards the uh, sea floor. Uh, we're aiming to get down to a target depth of around uh, 2,060 meters. So uh, we, we're not. We're going to keep the uh, the live feed running, uh, but the uh, all, all of the marine snow is going to move past a lot quicker now because uh, it still takes us time to get down to the seafloor. But everyone's welcome to stay, and of course you too, Dougal, welcome to stay and uh, talk about anything that we see as we we push down towards the seafloor. Can I uh, take this opportunity to uh, wish my mum a happy birthday because it's her birthday today. Uh, happy birthday from a thousand meters below the sea surface of the far north Great Barrier Reef. Mum, happy birthday, Norny. There we go. Happy birthday, Dougal's mum from Sebastian and RV Falcor and everybody here in the control room. I would sing, but it'll be on YouTube for posterity, so I, I, I don't think I will. <laughs> there we do, just swap the cameras around. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Nolan. <laughs> Alrighty, so off we go. Yeah, just drive it down to the sea floor now, and uh, Marty's just introduced. Uh, before what we're aiming for. This is this is our final dive um, for this expedition, uh, northern depths of the Great Barrier Reef, and also for the year. Um, it's been quite a ride, I've got to say. This is my third expedition involved with the Falcor, uh, and we've been mapping this really dramatic uh, ancient landscape in the far northern Great Barrier Reef. Uh, we, we were mapping in an area called Wreck Bay. Uh, it's an area I'm familiar with because I've uh, been working with uh, some colleagues back on, on shore to look at uh, 
whale sharks that congregate or aggregate within Wreck Bay. And as we've been mapping the seafloor in uh, in and around Wreck Bay and to the seaward of it, we found this really dramatic underwater landscape. There are a series of plunge pools. If you can imagine, like imagine a waterfall carved environment. We're probably talking about ancient Australian landscape here. Uh, the first plunge pool drops from around about uh, 900 metres to 1,200 metres, so the, the, the cliff there is about 300 metres high. And then there's a second plunge pool to seaward of that, and that drops from that 1,200 metres down to 1,700 metres. So it's about a, a 500 metre high cliff uh, in the second plunge pool, and that's our target today. So we're basically heading into the, the very bottom of this, uh, this second large plunge pool. You can see this Here's an inset here that John's done a fly-through video here. Uh, you can see how the what would have been uh, probably freshwater rivers, that uh, that channel is about two kilometres wide, just to give you a sense of scale. So we're talking really incredible landscape. Uh, and there's a smaller channel draining into the uh, to other part of the that first plunge pool. So it's you know a, quite a circular amphitheatre, and that's just the top one. And then there's an even uh, deeper one below it and that's about a 700 meter high cliff uh, just at the face of that one. Now all of this environment has been carved in long geological time we're talking back millions of years, and what's happened is the Australian uh, the Australian margin has flexed downwards, and so all of this landscape is now underwater, and the bottom of it is at two kilometres deep. But it's it's this ancient carved waterfall carved land, uh, landscape that is preserved on the seafloor. Um, and in fact, there's actually a third plunge pool that's even deeper again, isn't there? But yeah. we've had to close our eyes and pretend that that's not there because <laughs> we'd dearly love to do a dive in that as well. Yeah, that's getting down around three, nearly, you know, two and a half, nearly three kilometres deep. Uh, just an amazing landscape. And this, to think that all this was on the, in the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park, no one knew this existed. And, you know, prior to the Falco coming here, all the marine charts are fairly ambiguous with, you know, certainly fairly broad contours. We had no idea this existed here. And so I guess it, it just speaks to the remoteness of the area uh, that, you know, it's not until you get these modern mapping tools that allows you to look at it in full three-dimensional shape that we really, ha you know, realise just uh, what was there. And then, because you see all the canyons that are cutting down into probably soft sediment. This is the, the continental slope. Um, so it's about three kilometres, uh, you know, uh, at the uh, in the foreground there. So that's almost nearly three kilometres in vertical height. And then there's the Great Barrier Reef Shelf, which is very well mapped. Uh, it's shallow, you know, you can swim on these coral reefs. Uh, the inter-reef lagoon area is about 30, 40 metres deep. But no one had any idea of this strange offshore deeper landscape um, along the, the Great Barrier Reef margin. So, you know, for us it's exciting to map it and also get a chance to see what's down there. So it'll probably take us about half an hour or so to get down to to the very bottom. Uh, so of course people can go and have a, uh, what are we seeing, people washing dishes. Uh, I'm gonna grab some lunch shortly. Um, but uh, Marty and I, we're in the audio seat. We'll be uh, taking turns about through the afternoon. having now the fly through of all the mapping that we've done over the last uh, three weeks. Uh, this is during leg two of the northern depths of the Great Barrier Reef uh, expedition. So uh, we've mapped as far north as what's called Great Detached Reef. Uh, if you look at the uh, map of Australia, you see this big long pointed triangular piece. This is Cape York Peninsula. That's the grey area at the back of this uh, 3D depth model for, for the Great Barrier Reef. And then there are these really interesting isolated uh, reefs, and these are called detached reefs, and there are seven of them. 
uh, including Rain Island, which is a very, very special reef. Uh, it's, one, it's the world's largest green sea turtle rookery. Uh, so it's a collection of uh, very tall reefs, and they're detached because they're not joined to the Great Barrier Reef shelf itself. Wreck Bay is part of this whole story. It doesn't have a detached reef sitting in the middle of it, but it has this really strange uh, waterfall carved landscape with uh, what we're calling plunge pools at the end. So if you can imagine that it was once above, uh, above the water surface, it was exposed to, to, uh, to the air, and fresh water would have drained across this landscape like this, a big bathtub. And the plug hole is where the plunge pools are. There we go, it's a really interesting perspective now. So we're basically, it's the Google Eye view looking straight down on top of these strange detached reefs. And you can see this uh, really dramatic uh, canyons that are carving into probably soft sediment on the Great Barrier Continental Slope. And that's what we've been revealing over the last few weeks. Each, each day is a little bit like um, uh, Christmas. You know, we wake up in the morning and see what, what the guys have mapped overnight, and it's just been a, a real thrill to, to see the seafloor revealed in, in you know, incredible detail. So there's another view of our uh, the plunge pool. This is the lower plunge pool. The base of that is around about 2,000 metres deep, so two kilometres deep. Uh, it's pretty hard to get your head around the scale of these things, but it, you know, where I live in Cairns, there's a mountain that's exactly 1,000 metres high. So whenever I'm talking about the deep Great Barrier Reef or in lectures and the like, I usually take a photo of that mountain, stack it on each other, and say, that's how deep it is. That's where we're going. So today we're going on two two of these thousand meter high mountains stacked on each other but into the depths and we're only just halfway through it so we've got a good probably a good half an hour yet to, to get down to the bottom of the sea floor uh, it'll be cold and dark and the aim of uh, today with whatever remaining time we have is to try and climb up the uh, the steep vertical wall right adjacent to it. Oh, this is a great view. So we're still climbing down through the water column, down onto the sea floor, and it's like a big wide canyon, probably about 800 meters wide, at the uh, at the base here. And then we're going to go up this, well, sort of a measures about 700 meter high uh, vertical face. Uh, hopefully we'll get to see some uh, cold water corals and sponges and things like that, Marty. Keeping our eye out for any of those uh, carnivorous sponges um, for our colleague Merrick Eakins, who is the curator of sessile invertebrates at the Queensland Museum. Uh, he's studying these carnivorous sponges. Uh, we won't have a great deal of time, so we'll be sticking to our transect and doing a fairly uh, timely uh, ascent. We won't have a lot of time to explore around, so just opportunistically, if we do see any of these carnivorous sponges or um, a deep, cold blackwater coral, we'll try and sample those, but otherwise we'll just be making our way back up uh, towards the surface. Yes, and then that will be the end of the dives and also for this year, Marty. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? I think when we started well, on this leg of this voyage nearly a month ago, but the two other voyages previous to this one where we've been out in the Coral Sea and on the Queensland Plateau and many, many ROV dives, um, both physically on board and also remotely for yourself, um, doing that first uh, remote voyage back in April where there were no scientists on board the ship. The RV Falcor was still able to continue doing science with you, uh, 
running the show from your spare bedroom at home in Cairns. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we started out, I think we planned originally four dives on that voyage. That was the visioning of the Coral Sea Marine Park expedition. We ended up doing 14. And, uh, you know, there I was stuck in COVID like everybody else. I was in my spare bedroom doing audio and watching this amazing vision coming in. Uh, a fantastic distraction, but of course it's, it's just morphed into this huge amount of science that's, and brought many, many people along for the ride, including, of course, all of the people watching live, uh, experts and non-experts alike. It's just, just been incredible to have so many people involved with these dives. But, you know, we started out with, uh, I think, originally five principal investigators on that original voyage, all of us doing virtual uh, audio in from wherever we were in Australia. 